Okay, and Mr. Means, good morning. Is your are you ready to go with your client? I am. Uh, I can. I, is your client here? No, my client is not here. Why is that? Because I told her yesterday that as I filed an appearance, I would contact the court and try to get this moved to a new date. Uh, I called the court several times yesterday, emailed the court last night, uh, no response. I called the court early again this morning and uh, finally did get a hold of a clerk. Uh, and put me through to the prosecutor. The prosecutor suggests that I file a stip in order to adjourn this matter so that I can get discovery so I can review the file. I just heard from my client literally like two, three minutes ago while I was sitting here. I've been trying to reach her since I spoke to her this morning. So, uh, Judge, we, we had suggested to the court clerk that we could appear by Zoom or adjourn this. Um, I just now got a chance to look at the police report for the first time. I did request discovery, and, and the prosecutor, of course, is more than happy to provide my office with discovery, but I'll need time to review that before we can give anything of substance. I understand That's that. That's why I was asking for the adjournment. I understand that, but counsel, this, the, the court is the one that can tell your client not to appear, not anybody else, and this matter has been pending since June 18. Notice is mailed June 22nd. And so I'm not sure why she was instructed not to be here without having an adjournment um, confirmed by the court or granted by the court. We could have at least conducted the arraignment, set any bond conditions, set bond and bond conditions if appropriate, and then set it for a new pretrial date. But your client absolutely should have been here. Well, my client went to work after I told her that I signed or has had to stiff an order for the court's entry. I had no reason to believe that this court would decline to enter that stiff an order. And I don't quite understand why the court did decline to enter that order. Because counsel, the information I had was that you submitted that this morning yeah. and that you, right before submitting that, you submitted your appearance. You filed your appearance just three minutes before submitting your request for an adjournment. That's not true. I submitted the discovery demands and the appearance probably at six o'clock this morning, so. Okay, but we're not here at six o'clock this morning. Right. We're at six o'clock in the morning. I had called, but I had called the court please, yesterday. Please, please, please let me finish. Sure. You could have emailed the court yesterday in lieu of calling because as you're aware, um, emailing the court is more effective than calling in because when there's phone calls, some people, talk a little bit longer or what have you. And the emails are generally responded to pretty quickly. So um, you also indicated that you emailed in last night, by yesterday which of course, four. of course, I'm sorry, what? Yesterday around four. Around four. Mm -hmm. Before four, after four, at four? Around four. Okay, but again, the client needs to be here. Client's already gone to work, Judge. I'm, I'm actually, I had another question for you. I have Eric Dalton up tomorrow morning. If that's not entered in the register of action online, so I can't find the case number for it. But he did provide me with paperwork last night that indicates that he's here tomorrow or that there's an order for him to, enter, for him to appear tomorrow. Um, but I, I, it's, it's not in the computer system. I mean, I can, I can produce my client tomorrow morning, easy enough. My, this client tomorrow morning. But uh, I don't have a case number for Mr. Dalton's case for tomorrow. Okay, and counsel, when were you retained in this matter? Yesterday. Okay, let me be, Here, that your client absolutely should have been here. She had a notice to appear. The court had not granted any stipulation for an adjournment or otherwise. So she should have been here, at least for the arraignment portion. And we could have adjourned the pretrial for discovery purposes if that was what was requested and agreed upon. Have your client here tomorrow morning. What time is your other matter scheduled? I don't know. Uh, nine or ten.
Well, okay, I need to know that so that I can. Um... I can't tell because it's not entered in the computer system. It's a felony case, and for whatever reason, the court has decided that we don't enter felony cases until the day of the hearing, I guess. I, I don't know. Counsel, your sarcasm is not acceptable. And that, is not, and that is not, please don't interrupt me. And that is not what the court has decided to do. Do you have the, do you have a copy of the docket over there, please, Bobby? Today's docket. Tomorrow's docket. I do not. Do we have, do we have it over there? No. I can get one. Yes, please. I should note on this case, though, Judge, that you are correct that this case is nearly two months old at this point. Um, I noticed that when I was looking up the offense date. She posted an interim bond two months ago. So I don't know why we would be revisiting bond. For purposes of the arraignment, I'm waiving any sort of a reading and have already done that through my appearance and passed the court to enter a not guilty plea. Okay. And this court is not waiving your client's appearance. Okay. Uh, again, also though, Judge, I did I did inform the clerk this morning when I finally did get through to somebody that I'd be more than happy to appear by Zoom. And the court clerk indicated that literally no cases are being heard via Zoom in terms of criminal cases. But that's not my understanding of what's actually going on in practice. So I'm sorry, what is that? I, I'm, I'm led to believe that from the clerk's representations that everything is being conducted in person now. But in my experience, numerous cases are being conducted via Zoom. So if it was just a matter of appearing to, uh, you know, appear for the arraignment purposes, if the waiver in my, in my pleadings is not sufficient, I don't understand why we would be required to personally appear for an arraignment. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday cases other than PCCs are all in person. Mondays and Fridays are Zoom. Is there any particular reason for that, Judge? I mean, I know that- Because this court is back in person, with the exception of Mondays and Fridays, the court is in person for all matters except for PCCs. That is what this court indicated when we reopened and we put forth what we were doing with our dockets. So that is that is why. Okay, but as what, is your client, Dalton, what is your client's name? Alfred Dalton? Yeah, Eric Dalton. Eric Dalton. You're sure it's Eric? Yeah. There's an Alfred Henry Dalton Jr. No. I saw that case in the register of action. That's not my client. And Eric Dalton, E R I C or E R I K? I believe it's E R I C. Do you have a Dalton up tomorrow? That's a different name. We do. Hmm. So we're going to go off the record just one moment. <laughs> so I did. Uh, two things. Number one, um, the only communication we received from your office counsel was this morning at 8.50 a.m. And that was um, your appearance. And also, um, you dated your appearance August 16th, which is today. So nothing was received by your office yesterday. Nothing was received by your office at 6 a.m. this morning, it was 8.50 a.m. Furthermore, you also indicated that you have, um, it was, it's also important to note that the case was scheduled for 9.15 this morning. And um, you indicated in our off the record discussion that um, your client is not here because you told her she didn't have to be here because you were, presuming that a stipulation was going to be granted. However, that stipulation wasn't received at this court until about five minutes or so after your appearance was received. And are you trying to pull something up to support something different? Oh, I don't yeah. know. Okay. And um, further, you indicated that you have a case coming up tomorrow for Mr. Eric Dalton we do not have an Eric Dalton anywhere in our system. Okay. So we have an Alfred Dalton. What's the charge for Mr. Dalton? You're for Eric Dalton. It's a controlled substance of some type. 
Well, that's tomorrow. All Alfred Dalton has a possession narcotic. Okay. Is that your client? I believe it is. It must be. There must be some confusion. <clears throat> I'll have to check that after I leave. But insofar as responding, uh, I have a copy of an email here. Filing an appearance and discovery demand today on this case. I did not get a chance to do it yesterday before I left the office, but the email represents. Yes, you indicated that you did. You said at four o'clock ish. Around four o'clock, you sent that to the court. That is what you represented. Yeah. Email. Around four o'clock yesterday. Yes. Okay. You got a copy of it. And what's the date on that? Yesterday. At what time? 4.15, according to this. Okay, just so you know, I looked at our emails and it, we didn't receive anything from your office until 8.50 this morning. You know, Judge, I'm accusing me of lying. Counsel? We have, we've gotten to the point now. Counsel, please don't interrupt me. I'm not accusing you of lying. I'm letting you know that whatever you sent yesterday did not come through on our end and the only thing we received is at 8.50 this morning. I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just informing you as to what we received from your office. We did not have anything come through on the email yesterday, last night, or this morning before 8.50. I'm just letting you know on our end, that's the only thing that shows from your office is 8.50 a.m. Okay. Okay? I'm not accusing you of anything. Thank you, Judge. I appreciate that. In any event, the email said, filing appearance and discovery demand today on this case it is set for tomorrow at 9.15 a.m. Since I won't have any information regarding the case, I was hoping it could be heard via Zoom or adjourned so I can get discovery before any scheduled pretrial. Thereafter, I called the court. I've looked at my cell phone records and my business records. I called the court a total of 17 times yesterday afternoon through today when I finally got a hold of a clerk at 8.58 a.m. Now, I don't know when the fax was actually received by the 27th District Court but I faxed out my appearance and discovery demand very early this morning. That said, I spoke to the clerk at 8.58 a.m. The clerk indicated that she put me on hold. I have recordings of these calls. I asked her if we could appear by Zoom or if we could get an adjournment of this. She checked with the supervisor and came back and said, no, the supervisor says that we can't do that. I said, well, is the prosecutor available? She said, yes. I then spoke to the prosecutor, Tony, and he indicated no problem, just send in a stipend order, adjourning the pretrial and arraignment or whatever it's scheduled for today, and I'll get you discovery and I'll sign a discovery order. And sure enough, he's prepared a discovery order. It's there with the file. I then faxed that into the court. I later in the morning followed up with the court and was told to my chagrin that the court was not entering the stipend order. Now, given that the prosecutor had no objection to this, and I certainly wanted it, I had told my client, hey, I submitted a stip in order for the court to enter so we can get us a new date. Now, just to be clear, so that this is, I don't look like a lunatic in front of the public here. When a stip in order is provided to a court, almost every judge in my experience ever enters the order. There is absolutely no reason why we couldn't have appeared by Zoom this morning if the court really felt that it was necessary for us to address, say, a bond issue for arraignment purposes. 6.006 permits the teleconferencing capabilities for criminal procedures, and 2.407 specifically allows for Zoom proceedings. So if it was really important that we appear for a bond issue for just arraignment purposes, and, 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 and again, going back in time, this case is almost two months old. If there was some urgency to protect the public or to protect an individual, Say that this were a domestic violence case or something like that. Certainly a 60-day delay is a more of a concern to the public's safety than whether or not we have personally appeared here this morning. Personal appearances should not be the norm. Because as, as, as pointed counsel, out- Counsel, counsel, we're done. We're done. This court indicated that it set its dockets on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays in person. That is what this court did. Yes, the court rules allow for teleconferencing, Zoom, otherwise, hybrid dockets, whatever it may be. When this court receives communication less than half an hour before the case is scheduled to appear, the court is not inclined to grant that stipulation and that request. 
I will allow you to have your client here tomorrow morning with your other client, if that's who your other client is, Mr. Alfred Dalton, at 9.30 a.m. In the future, as I've indicated before, fax doesn't seem to always work for some reason with this, with our, um, what, uh, communication um, cables or whatever you want to call it. So email is always the best way to send communications to this course. So I will see you and Ms. Cousineau and Mr. Dalton tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Thank you, Judge. There is a discovery order in the file too that was submitted by the press. I understand that. So we'll handle all of that tomorrow. Thank you, Your Honor. 